spring and check valve or actually you call it a, a damper or an accumulator basically means the same thing you got a small one here another small one here you got a small long one here and a big long one here separator plates got the uh, silicone embedded you're probably going to destroy it when you take it apart so it's recommended that you replace it every time you got all these filters that go in there and 30 torques on these bolts that are kind of line up bolts. Looks like right there and right there. Here's where the valve body bolts go. They're all the same. They're E12s. Your uh, temperature sensor has a O-ring on it. Wiring harness goes on here and is an eight millimeter. in the little tabs after it clicks in pull the little red tab over to lock it into place just like so and you're all like that valve body. Alright, when you get the Ford kit, everything is going to come just in a jumbled mess. They don't separate anything. It's just one big wad of O-rings and seals and everything's all together. A D-shaped ring there. There's a D-shaped ring on the bottom. shaped ring on top a 
lube all that up really well. Piston, new bit up. Return spring. This side goes down. It lubed that this side of the piston up. shaped ring here actually I should get a picture of that that return spring is upside down so flip it over you want the small end facing up start with a pressure plate Clutch, alternate up. Oh, I gotta wait for this because I got to put that uh, piston in the pump, and uh, this has to go on here first. And I need to use this to put that piston in the pump, so we'll hold off on that. Alright, down in here is the ceiling ring. I'm going to have to stretch this out, put it on there and get a hose clamp, tighten that down and reform that. It's an O-ring that goes here. Press your front seal in. On a PTO style, there's a washer that goes here. There's also a washer that goes here. On the non-PTO, you don't have to worry about that. Also on this cover is a lathe cut seal. All right, now get down in the groove. Here we go. On the idler gear it's different for a PTO. There's bushings on that. On the cross shaft put the hole down and then there's a three millimeter allen set screw that goes in here. gear goes this way and then the cover is going to go on and this has to go right there then you have seals <coughs> rubber seals that go on all these bolts that go on for the case and for the cover and these here are a hundred and uh, 89 inch pounds, I think it was. 159 inch pounds. And then here's the bolts for the going onto the case. And we'll talk about that when we get there. And we have a D shaped seal that goes down in here. Make sure you don't roll it. 
Let me tell you, this piston here was a pure pain to get out. There's a D-shaped seal that goes on here. So I'm going to use the press to press this back down in there. So the piston's going to go in. Return spring goes on. I'm going to use this plate off the F clutch to try to get this pressed down like I did before. And then there's a step to the snap ring that faces down. Let me tell you, it went in a lot easier and it came out. I'm going to have to come up with something else because that ring is just not quite stiff enough. Alright, lube up your molded piston. The sprag assembly, the outer race turns counterclockwise, locks clockwise. This has to be pressed in there. So, find where it goes, and then you have to press that in. Once those are, that's in, and just talk about it. Steels are going to go in, then there's a cushion plate or a cushion ring should say, then a clutch, then a steel, then another cushion, and a clutch, and a steel, and a cushion, and a clutch, a steel, and a cushion, and a clutch, and a steel, and a cushion, and a clutch, and a pressure plate. Now on the pressure plate, there is this tab right here. The opening of the snap ring is going to have to go there. All right, we'll go ahead and put our F clutches on before we put the other together. snap ring on first and this ring goes down And this snap ring goes on and it goes in the outside. Okay. Go ahead and loop this up. Got a D ring here. D ring on the inside. Turns our molded balance piston. Side up. And then we have the snap ring. It's going to go on there. Let me go press this in. Okay, we got an apply plate. You got two fingers. They have to line up in the notches there, of course. And then alternate your steels and clutches up. And I had an extra clutch, so apparently there's a model that takes extra 
clutch here. And then our snap ring. Okay, D clutch. We have a D shaped seal here. Turn spring. Balance piston this side down. And our snap ring. Alternate. <clears throat> steels and clutches again. Here again I had an extra clutch so apparently there's a model that has an extra clutch here. Pressure plate and snap ring. Okay on your input shaft you got solid rings here, here, and here. I uh, just used a hose clamp to resize those. O-rings here and here. There's a larger one here. There's a scarf cut. Well, I wouldn't call them scarf cut. They are cut sealing rings. Just not gonna stay, are you? Sorry, bastard. And they go together just like that. They go here. You have solid rings here, and the 10R80 ring sizer will work here. So that's what I did for that one. And push this back up a little bit. Went a little too far. Okay, this has got to be a jackass. I'll get that back out. There's uh, solid rings here, used hose clamps <clears throat> again on that. On the drum, you have a black D seal that goes on the bottom. You have an orange that goes in the top, or the next one up. The top one is a snap ring groove. You have a D seal that goes here. Okay. You have steels and clutches are here. Keep your cutouts lined up with each other. Okay, fingers go down on your return spring. Your piston goes down. Then this piston goes down. And then our snap ring. This bearing goes on here. down in here and loop this up a little bit. If you're going to use this, 
even on the other one I think I would go in here and I would chamfer this down a little bit so that it looks like that not quite as dramatic but just so it's easier to get that sailing ring back around it because that was a pain loop up your o-rings really need to put this in a hole on the table and then their snap ring Goes right down in that groove right there. snap ring in the bottom groove Put your ring gear in with the tall side up and then let's see we put the opening over here and let's put this opening over here on this snap ring Okay, uh, let me figure out how I'm going to mount this case, and we're going to get ready to stuff this in the case. Alright, on the pump, you have this plate, and this plate goes on. There be a lot of pauses in this because I got to take a bunch of pictures. And this plate goes on. and a rubber. The rubber goes up against the goes up against this just like so. This has to go in that pin right there. Just not enough room for everything. have a rubber o-ring and a ceiling ring and this stuff did not come in the kit from Ford so it's not getting rebuilt per se and then the spring goes on here I, uh, I do make a tool to put these springs in I just put it in with the screwdriver Do this without screwing everything up. Yeah, 
get it pretty stiff. And there's a ring that goes down in the bottom and our pump shaft. Actually, can't put that yet. And our rotor goes with the dot up. Then we can put our pump shaft in. And our veins. And the veins will have marks on them where the rings were riding on them. Put them back the same way. If these are worn so bad that they got a groove in them, uh, they would need to be replaced. Another ring on top. And the steel ball goes in this hole. 312 thousandths. It's a little seat that sits into. And this barrel shaped spring goes on top of that. And then we have this plate. goes on there. looks like I'm gonna have to press this one in so there we go just had it cocked And this plate goes on top of that. There is a bushing in it. Alright, these are E6s, I believe. I don't know if Ford gives a spec for these. I'm gonna have to try to look it up. Oh, and screwed up. There's a couple spots around here where you can pry up on this. This ring goes on top. Now there. see if I can find a torque spec for this. Um, this let me make sure I got this going right. Okay this plate or this cover goes on here got two 30 torques that go on here 
You got the pump gear. You can go on there. Here's an E-clip that holds it onto the shaft. Right there. And then this cover goes on. Here's an 8 millimeter that holds that on. There's a gasket that goes here. And the filter seal goes here. Alright. <clears throat> See how this goes. You got your output shaft with the three, those are called Z um, sealing rings, the way that they're put together. Um, the bearing is snapped onto the back there. You have a bearing, this side faces up. Now everything we're going to do from this point on, they want you to assemble everything into that shell and then lower it all in at one time. I'm gonna, not going to do that. Uh, we're going to see how this goes. I've done this before on 10 or 80s and it works pretty well. put your shell in there is a race in here also on your shell you want to make sure if it doesn't have a mark and you take this apart you want to mark it so that the two marks line up snap ring in there that holds that in there's a race right there there's another snap ring up here There we go. Got our E clutch assembly. Here's a bearing and race on the back. Make sure the race is up against in there. There's another bearing on the front here. Now this I may take back out and put that F clutch drum in or CDF clutch drum in there. Sometimes it's easier to put it in all this into the shell at one time. We got the recesses facing down. got the washer and the planet it's going to go on just like that Put your CDF drum in.
Okay, I'm not saying that this is easy, but it's easier than if you don't have an engine hoist or two people in some way to lift this thing and drop it all in there as one assembly. And this is an alternative. Put your clutch hub in, there's nothing in between the hub and the drum. And this might be easier to leave these clutches out and then put them in after. <coughs> okay, there we go. Okay, you got your planet. There is a washer here. Um, in the 10R80 kits, they give you this washer from Transtech. They didn't give a washer in this Ford kit, so it's not getting replaced. Bearing goes on that way. This thing is so stinking tall and heavy. <clears throat> Alright, you have sun gear. You got the sun gear and bushing. You got the bearing with the lip up. This is your selective washers, how you set the end clearance. And you have this planetary. Okay, and then you have your snap ring. And you have this bearing. This ring gear. This bearing, the nut, turn it counterclockwise, then their locking ring, There we go. And we got our pressure plate this side down. Cushion. Clutch. And alternate that up.
top steel is thicker. And then our cushion plate. I forgot this ring. This ring goes on here. Here, 30 foot pounds of torque on this. I had to put that in a press and press that ring in because it kept wanting to pop, flop around and not go in without it being equal pressure all the way around. Never to do that one. No. Put your two O-rings on your connector, lube them up. This tab has to go in that slot right there. That has to line up on there. This has to line up right there. It's 62 inch pounds.
Put your pump in. Oh, we got seal that goes in there. And we got a bridge seal that goes up here. E16s on the pump. E16s, E6s. Sixty-two inch pounds on that, also. All right, new linkage seal. Switch. Let's see, going this way. I'll go ahead and put my detent in there. so I can move it around. This has to go on there. And that sits right there. Our shaft. Line up the holes. your red lock ring in. Put your roll pin in. Alright, put your valve body on. Uh, the valve body bolts to 62 inch pounds and then retorque them to 97. Or eight millimeters. These are filter bolts. The front one and this back one. All right. And we still have one other 
bolt. You getting that? How much? Put your connector in, lock it down. Filter in. Don't forget if you had two wheel drive there would be a seal in here and there would be a tube coming up here. And put your pan on, put your rear seal in, and we're done.